commissioning USS Cole, DDG-67. On April 8, 1995, Cole was christened by her sponsor, Mrs. Lee Perry. In the name of the United States, and in honor of a great American military hero, I christen thee Cole. May God bless this ship and all who sail aboard. USS Cole, DDG-67, is the 17th ship in the Arleigh Burke DDG-51 class of Aegis guided missile destroyers, the US Navy's most powerful destroyer fleet. Cole is named in honor of Sergeant Darrell Samuel Cole, United States Marine Corps, who was posthumously awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the nation's highest award for valor and bravery. On February 19, 1945, during the battle with Japanese forces at Iwo Jima, 24-year-old Sergeant Cole led his machine gun section ashore in the assault of the island. When one of his squads became pinned down by enemy fire, Cole, armed only with a pistol and hand grenades, crawled forward, destroying two gun emplacements with the grenades. After the destruction of the enemy positions, Sergeant Cole was killed by an enemy hand grenade while returning to lead his squad again. Sergeant Cole had also seen action at Kwajalein, Saipan, and Tinian. It's a pleasure for me this morning to represent the men and women of Ingalls Shipbuilding who have built this great ship. To Commander O'Brien and his fine crew, I extend to you on behalf of the employees of Ingalls Shipbuilding best wishes as you take your and Mrs. Perry's ship into the United States Navy fleet. It is my pleasure today to deliver this ship with the following kind of annotation. Mrs. Perry, in all the years that you have been married to the Secretary, I'll bet that he has never brought you home a present like this. <laughs> this present, your ship, has passed all of her trials and is performing superbly. This ship is designed to go in harm's way and to take our sons and daughters to sea, to wherever our nation takes them, wherever our nation needs them, and more importantly, to allow them to take on any challenge that's facing them, and more important than that, to come home safely. There is high technology here. There's a beautiful ship quite capable of going anywhere in this world, and she is unmatched by any other country. This morning, though, we begin together on the steel decks you see before you, a journey that will carry generations of sailors around the world. In a matter of minutes, members of this crew will bring the ship to life and start operating one of our country's true national assets. It is an honor for me to be here to share this moment with this crew as they begin writing their own page in naval history. Today, we also honor the man after which this great ship was named, Sergeant Darrell Samuel Cole, United States Marine Corps Reserve. It is fitting that this honor be given to such an incredible hero who gave his life while serving in his Corps, country, in World War II. Now, one of the great traditions of the United States Navy is our sponsorship program. And Lee, we could not have found a better sponsor than you. And I can tell you, as a person who grew up in a Navy family, that your spirit will be the spirit of this ship. And my request to you, Lee, is always remember the families. It is a particularly unique Navy phenomenon that we in the Navy family often endure long periods of separation from those we love. There is another spirit, though, ladies and gentlemen, that will exist in this ship, and that is the spirit of the men and women of America's shipbuilding force who built this ship. This fine warship is representative of the best technology that exists in the world today. And we intend to keep that technology number one in the world today, and we intend to keep this Navy number one in the world today. This ceremony formally announces to everyone our commitment to remain the world's premier Navy. It's a proud day for our Navy, and it's a proud day to be in our Navy. 
As I look out at the officers and crew of coal, I'm intensely proud and also a little bit envious because I'd like to be going to sea with them next week. But as the ship is brought to life in a short while and the officer of the deck accepts the long glass, the first watch is set, the long hours and months of hard work as a pre-commissioning unit will come to fruition. You will take your place in the fleet and begin to make your own history. As you strive to make this great ship what it will become, you'll come away better people for having served in her. Your commitment to this wonderful ship will be strengthened by your commitment to your shipmates. You, the crew of USS Cole, represent the very best of America's most treasured assets. As coal sails the oceans of the world, you will make her the powerful symbol of our nation's commitment to the preservation of liberty and peace. What a great day for the Navy. And what a proud day for the crew of this mighty warship. Just stop for a moment and look at it. It's beautiful in its form, awesome in its power. Today, as we commission USS Cole, it is appropriate for us to remember three great Americans whose lives infused the spirit of this mighty ship. President Theodore Roosevelt, Admiral Mike Borda, and Sergeant Darrell Cole. Almost a century ago, Theodore Roosevelt, then Assistant Secretary of the Navy, had a vision of a world-class Navy a man who played a key role in building our powerful Navy was with us last year at the christening, Admiral Mike Borda. On that day, Mike was bursting with pride over this new warship and our great Navy. Both Theodore Roosevelt and Mike Borda understood that America's real secret weapon is our people, the men and women who serve in uniform in their families. Sergeant Darrell Cole, this ship's namesake was one such secret weapon. He gave his life for his comrades and his country, and he earned a place in history as a Medal of Honor hero. Today, America's armed forces are practicing preventive defense by training with former Soviet bloc forces, setting an example of how professional militaries serve peace and democracy and building new avenues of trust and cooperation between East and West. TR's battle group has been right in the thick of these efforts. We recognize, however, that preventive defense like preventive medicine may not always work. And that is why, as a Secretary of Defense, 